G'day everyone, welcome to Inside Rugby with Mark. If you haven't been here before, my name is Mark. I'm a Kiwi rugby fan who's living here in beautiful Cancun in Mexico. And in today's video, I'm going to go through the South African second test team that's been announced by Rassi, give you the team and also give you my views on what I think about the team. So let's get into the video right now. G'day everyone and welcome to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. It's great to have you on board. We're growing a great rugby community across the world on this channel. So if that's something that's interesting you, hit the subscribe button and make sure you stick around for everybody who's coming back again and watching another video of mine. Thank you very much. I am very grateful that you spend some time watching my videos. Now, unfortunately, due to just a couple of people who come onto this channel, and try and be louts we're going to put in a card system for you all in the comments so if you're going to be dis disrespectful towards myself or anybody else that's part of our wonderful community here on inside rugby with mark you do it once you'll be shown a yellow card if you come back and you're a repeat offender you'll be shown a red card and you will be deleted from my channel so please don't waste your time or that of my wonderful community here on inside rugby with mark now let's get on with the video today i want to talk to you about the south african team that's been chosen by rassi erasmus to play against the australian wallabies in perth toria on saturday in the second test match in the rugby championship round this weekend and what an exciting team it is and i say that because once again we see the incredible depth of South African rugby and as a Kiwi I'm absolutely in awe of the amount of talent that exists in the South African countryside as well as in the major cities. Now one of the other things I'd like to add I'm fully aware of the fact that you could probably put four or five teams together that could compete in this rugby championship that this year because if you do go through the list of injured players and players that are not up for selection at the moment there's plenty of other South African players that could really easily fit into this team so I'm absolutely in awe of that and uh, I'm just a great big rugby fan so it doesn't matter what country I support I think it's wonderful to see this for rugby and we're seeing such great depth but also talent in these players from South Africa and really is the immediate future of the game and what they're being able to set as far as the standard on the field. Now after all that ranting on supporting the South Africans, I better get on talking about the team. We're going to start off in the front row on what Rassi's selection's done here. And of course, as I mentioned, there's been a lot of changes in this team for the second test. In the front row, we've got some new props and we've also got a new hooker as well. So we've got Vessels at prop, we've got Grobler as hooker and we've got uh, Thomas de Toit as the other prop in the, this game. And I think this is a wonderful front row. It's gonna give these guys an opportunity but I also think Rassi has already got one eye on those two test matches against New Zealand back in South Africa after the series in Australia. And I think that's one of the things that he was thinking when he selected this team. Yes, he wants to give these other young players an opportunity to show what they've got, but I also think there's a little bit of resting going on of those key players that he wants to match up against the Kiwis when it comes to those two test matches in, in South Africa and making sure there's possibly no injury Injuries from this particular game to those certain players but by all means this is a great opportunity for those other players to get a chance and I'm sure this front row is going to be really showing what potential they've got in delivering this for Rassi on Saturday. Okay moving on to the locks now and we've got Salman Morat coming in and we've got Ryan Nanoki and boy another two really good players we've seen Morat come off the bench before Nanoki gets a start in this one I'm very excited to see him get a uh, a full game here potentially for the Springboks and I think these guys are going to go very very well in the lineout and they're also going to be more dynamic around the field I, I remember watching Nanoki in the season in the uh, URC and he was very very good around the field so I'm excited to watch these two guys I think they're very good locks for South Africa and of course Morat has that leadership quality as well that he brings to that position so two good selections there as far as I'm concerned and I think South Africa are going to do well and uh, we've got even Netzebeth on the bench for this game so we can always bring him on if need be 
So then moving into the Lucy's for this game and Marco Van Staden who started off the bench last week is going to get a start in this game. Not much needs to be said about him. He does it all for the South Africans and he's going to really show I think from the start in this game that he's very much involved and I hope that his discipline is okay in this game and he doesn't get shown the yellow card at all. Lowe gets another go at number eight. I was impressed with him last week. Think he can go to another level though and be extra special for the Springboks team. So looking forward to what he can do in Perth on Saturday. And then we've got Peter Steff de Toy. And I think in every video I make about South Africa, I talk about the brilliance of Peter Steff de Toy. So he's back in the Lucy role again this weekend after being starting in the locking position last weekend. I think he's going to go better in the, in the Lucy position. It's going to free him up a little bit more to do that brilliant stuff that he does around the field so maybe expect him to score another try and to, to be heavily involved in general play so that's the starting eight for the Springboks this weekend against the Wallabies I think it's a very good pack I still think they're going to give the Wallabies a very hard time and uh, I don't take it down very many notches from the team that started on the field last weekend then let's have a look at the bench that's going to come on for the Springboks. And the big change this weekend is we don't have the bomb squad. No, we have a 5-3 split this weekend. So let's look at those players that are going to be coming on off the bench. I think the bench really exemplifies the amount of talent that South Africa have waiting to come on because you're not going to lose anything by bringing these players on. In fact, I think you're actually going to gain something by bringing these players on whenever they get to come on the field on Saturday. So we've got Malcolm Marks first of all coming on and we've got Oxen Chair and uh, what a brilliant game he had last weekend. I'm still singing his praises over that. We've got Vincent Cock who's going to come on, Eben Etzebeth and then Quagga Smith. So what a great bench it is for South Africa. A lot of versatility there. Um, some of those guys can really bring a different type of look to the game when they come on and that's what I like about this particular bench this weekend for the Springboks. Okay let's talk about the back line here we've got a few changes for the Springboks in the back line this weekend and we'll start off at halfback. We've got Vandenberg coming in and that's an interesting one. I spoke about what I thought of Kobus Reinach last week in my, my video. Some of you agreed with me, others said no, you're wrong. Kobus Reinhardt is fantastic. Well, we're having a different look this weekend and it's going to be Vandenberg that gets a chance for the spring box at halfback. So it's going to be really interesting to watch, first of all, his box kicking and also his distribution pace because for me, those are the two key elements that we need to see from world-class halfbacks at the moment. And we'll see whether or not he can deliver on the great game against the Wallabies on Saturday. And then moving outside, we've got Mr. Miracle Man, as I'm starting to call him, Sasha Feinberg. And what an absolutely brilliant game he had again last weekend. Let's see whether he brings it. Obviously, Rassi has a lot of confidence in him. And he's giving him a lot of game time heading up to that All Black series, which I think Rassi's got his eye on, as I was mentioning before. So Sasha's going to start once again in the number 10 jersey. And then moving outside, we've got another change here. Damien D'Alandi's getting a week off, and we're seeing Lucano Arm come in. And uh, for me, this is a really good one as well. The last time I saw Arm play, he played exceptionally well. He was coming back into this team. And I think this is an interesting job as well, putting him in at number 12 with Jesse Creel outside of him at number 13. So I'm going to be really looking forward to seeing how this combination goes for the Springboks and whether Arm and Creel have got that combination both in offense and defense. I think that's really critical for number 12 and 13 so far in the game. I thought Jesse Creel had a brilliant game last weekend against the Wallabies. We saw more of him in open play taking on the defense. And I think this is one of the elements that South Africa are really starting to focus on with Tony Brown in their coaching um, crew now. And we're starting to see South Africa looking at using their weapons and their potential out wide. And Jesse Creel is one of those players that I'd like to see more from in that area. And we're starting to see that. So it's very exciting. And then moving out to the wing for this weekend, and we see Mapimpi coming in for Kurtley Arense. And uh, Arense getting a rest, I think, heading up to that all black duo, a uh, double game heading into South Africa in a couple of weeks' time. So we're going to see Mal Pimpi come in, and Mapimpi, I think, is just as exceptional. He knows how to score tries from anywhere, and he'll be a danger man for the South African team this weekend. Cheslin Colby gets to start on the other wing and look out for Cheslin either feeding the scrums or putting a ball into the line out. He seems to be Mr. Versatility these days. So it's going to be interesting to see how he goes, what he gets up to. But I love the way that Cheslin plays. And I think I've mentioned in previous videos, what I really love about him is his game management. He knows exactly how to read a game. 
And then at the back, we've got another one having a rest this week, and that's Willie LaRue. He's having a sit down, and we're seeing Fassi come in at fullback. And um, I like the way he plays. I don't think we've seen the real potential for him yet in a green jersey. And I'm going to be really interested to see how he goes against the Wallabies and how the South African backline are able to bring Fassi into play, particularly from a counter attack. Because what I have seen of him counter attacking before, he's exceptional in that area. So I'd like to see what he does with those kick returns. We saw that as a weakness from the Wallabies last week, their kicking strategy. And I think if Fassi gets enough ball and he's able to use his counter attacking skills, bringing Mapimpi and Colby along with him South Africa are going to be extremely dangerous from the back so I think that's a wonderful selection again for South Africa it gives and then because we have a 5-3 split this weekend for Rassi we see three on the bench for the backs and we've got Grant Williams coming back again a great selection I'm a big fan of Grant Williams if you haven't noticed that by now and then we've got Manny Leboc and Andre Pollard so this is really interesting to see how these two are going to be used. Are we going to see Sasha come on and uh, get replaced by either Pollard or Leboc? Or are we going to see Andre Pollard perhaps go to fullback at some stage during this game? Or perhaps Money Leboc? Let me know in the comments how you think this bench for the backs is going to work for the Springboks this weekend. I'm really interested to see how Money Leboc goes in coming on this weekend. He seems to have missed out that since Sasha has come on and showed us his brilliance. And it's going to be interesting to see whether he takes this opportunity when he does come on the field this weekend. So that's going to be one of the positional changes that I'm going to be watching with a lot of intent when it comes to Manny Leboc coming on. We know what Andre Pollard is determined to do, and that's to score points and put the points on for South Africa. I don't think they're going to be that much under the pressure that Pollard's going to be kicking penalty goals to win this game. But I, so it's going to be interesting to see whether he comes on and plays a little bit more of an open and expansive game. That's what I'm starting to see from the Springboks team as their evolution continues. So overall, what do I think of this selection choices from Rassi? Well, I think it's a really practical move and it kills two birds with one stone, I think. It gives those younger players or those players on the peripheral of main test selection team an opportunity to go out there and really cement themselves in the starting 15 or the starting 23 for South Africa. It also gives some of those key players a little bit of a rest heading into the All Black series that's going to come up in South Africa in a couple of weeks' time. And that's one thing I think Rassi has really got an eye on when it comes to these particular se selections for this game against the Wallabies. But I think last week's um, thumping of the Wallabies has given Rassi the opportunity to trial a few more players out, feeling as though they can still win the game comfortably against the Wallabies, who are struggling at the moment to get themselves together. And I think these players need to take that opportunity because we've got a very experienced bench sitting there. And if there's any creaking of the boat at all, I'm sure that Rassi is going to bring on those lifeboats and making sure those boys close out the game. I don't expect that to happen. I think there's going to be too much strength across the field for the Springboks, but it's going to be interesting to see how they go in that first 20 minutes of the game. I think these forwards are going to want to set the platform up so that they, that expansive game can be explored again by the Springboks, and I'm really excited to see what this back line can do because I think with Sasha, Lucano Arm and Jesse Krill, that sets up a fantastic opportunity to break through the Wallaby defensive line and set up those amazing wingers for the Springboks to score a lot of points. I expect the Springboks to score at least four or five tries in this game in the weekend, and I think they can come from any of that potential across the back line. But when those forwards get into the opposition 22, we're going to see them going for the line as well because there's a lot of good power in that front row from South Africa. So the pick and go is going to be very, very much a, a player, a factor in this game. As as are the Lucys as well. Expect for Van Staden and Peter Steftatoy looking to be coming off the back of the breakdown when South Africa are close to the Australian line and trying to get over for a try. I know some of you don't like me talking about it, but I'm going to talk about it anyway because it's a big thing for me, discipline. We're going to have to watch out for it again this weekend. So these players are all going to get the message, I'm sure, from Rassi. Stay on the field. Watch yourselves, particularly your tackle angle, and don't give away any silly penalties. That was the only thing that really kept 
Australia in the game last weekend and as many of you reminded me they probably wouldn't have scored that try Australia in the end because South Africa were down to 13 men at the time that was a very fair comment so thank you for those who made it so without that uh, situation in the game where discipline caught the South Africans out Australia did score that try close to the end of the game and uh, I expect that we're going to be watching a South African team this weekend that's going to be far more focused on staying on the field. So in a nutshell, I'm really excited by this team selection from Rassi. Let me know in the comments what you think. Has he got this right by making so many changes? Is this a little bit of an indication that Rassi feels they've got the beating of Australia again, even with this team? And when I say even with this team, this is a very strong rugby team. I'm not calling this a B team or a C team. I think this is a great team that could go out and play against any nation in the world and give them a hard time. So I think this is a great opportunity. I think this is smart management from Rassi, giving these players an opportunity and also resting those few key players who are going to obviously back up against the All Blacks in South Africa. So look, I look forward to reading your respectful comments uh, to this video. Let me know what you think about the selection and let me know what you think is going to happen in the weekend. And okay, so there you go. There's my views for all of that. I'm going to be back, of course, with plenty more content over the coming days talking about the lead up to these games. When the other teams are announced, I'll be making some videos about those as well. And of course, after the games themselves, I'll be giving you my in-depth analysis on how I see the games, what players stood out, and whether or not the coaches' strategies were spot on, spot on to winning that particular game. We've got some exciting rugby coming up for sure. Now, there's a few ways you can support my channel. We've got the subscriptions, of course, so hit subscribe, join the channel, that's completely free as is giving this video a like and a thumbs up. I've also launched the super thanks process on this channel as well. And I'm also on Twitter now under Inside Rugby with Mark. So follow me over there. And uh, we're growing another community on X, which is fantastic for growing the game of rugby across the world. So I share my gratitude and appreciation of you all for watching my videos. Thank you very much. I'll be back again really soon with some more content until then. Stay safe, stay well, keep enjoying your rugby no matter where you are around the world. And it's time to say adios from beautiful Cancun in Mexico. Bye for now.